The vibrant and colourful Jalamasi India in Kuala Lumpur is well known for its textile and jewellery businesses. It has also been touted as the country's most expensive commercial street, with a typical four-storey shop unit going for as much as 9 million these days. What is so appealing about Jalan Masjid India? From saris, jewellery, fabric to food, the colourful street offers visitors and shoppers a unique shopping experience. Visitors can sample a wide range of Indian cuisine. Popular sari centres, jewellery and textile shops, restaurants, money changers, costume jewellery and hotels. Masjid India is also the place for those looking for certain Indian cookwares. And the shops here are never vacant. Demand has pushed rentals to dizzying heights. Those familiar with the market say the ground floors alone average from 25,000 to as high as 50,000 a month. There are indications that Jalamasi India is in danger of losing the tag of Malaysia's most pricey commercial street. Some agents now see the title possibly heading towards the way of Jalan Bukit Bintang, which has seen rapid and mammoth developments over the last 10 years. It may take only 5 minutes or so to drive from Jalan Masih India to Jalan Bukit Bintang and one can immediately see the difference between the two. The nights in Jalan Bukit Bintang are long and exciting compared to Jalan Masjid India where the activities normally wind down between 7pm and 9pm except during the festive seasons like Ramadan. So will Jalan Masjid India lose its shine? Is it in danger of being pushed into the shadows of Jalan Bukit Bintang? Kovin Bala, the principal of GDS Property, says Jalan Masjid India is a recession-proof location for various reasons. There are limited shops here and these have the captive market. The shops are never vacant and are always in demand and hardly any shops are closed. They are also well supported by the Putra and Star LRG lines which bring in the pedestrian crowd. Kerry Real Estate Senior Berhad Director Nixon Paul believes Jalan Masjid India will remain the country's most expensive commercial street for another good 10 years or so. He says values will continue to rise, but at a slower rate. In the longer term, Nixon sees Jalan Bukit Bintang surpassing Jalan Masjid India as Jalan Bukit Bintang has shopping complexes and is more tourist-oriented, especially with the appearance of Bintang Walk. However, some notable changes on Jalan Masjid India have taken in recent years. Budget hotels such as Lotus Hotel, Wisma Hanifa Hotel, formerly an office tower, have sprouted up. According to GDS's Govin, another two or three have been planned for the area. Sun Singh Building, located at one end of Masjid India, has also been sold and it will be converted into a hotel. Campbell Complex, meanwhile, has been sold for 51 million ringgit. Govin says capital values in Jalamasi, India have gone up, with asking prices for a typical four-storey shop rising to 9 million ringgit from 7 million ringgit or 8 million ringgit two years ago. At press time, however, the new benchmark of 9 million has yet to be registered. Govin thinks values and rentals could have peaked while awaiting for fresh leads and directions before moving up further. Anthony Chua, director of KGV Lambert Smith Hampton, puts a lack of transactions of Jalan Masjid India to demand for the units. Shop blocks on the ground floor of Malayan Mansion and Selangor Mansion, one of the oldest flats in KL, can command prices of 
1.5 million to 1.7 million for a size of 800 square feet to 900 square feet. We recently conducted a rental survey of these shop lots and were amazed that they can fetch rentals of between RM20,000 to RM30,000 per month. These rentals reflect a rate of 23 ringgit per square foot to 36 ringgit per square foot, comparable to those within nearby established shopping complexes such as Semu House, Pertama Complex and Sobo. Rentals says GDS's Govin seem steady and have stabilized at around 40,000 to 50,000 mark per month for a four-story building depending on the type and nature of the business. Ground floors average at 25,000 ringgit up to 40,000 ringgit with first floors commanding 5,000 ringgit, second floors commanding 3,000 ringgit and third floors fetching 2,000 ringgit. Due to demand, Back portions of shops are also being rented out separately, creating a lot of retail buzz even at the back lane. This rear space can fetch anything between 10,000 ringgit to 15,000 ringgit in rental a month, depending on the size occupied by the tenants, says Govin. One obvious issue on Jalan Masjid India is the lack of parking space. Aside from the hike in parking fees in the area, there is not enough being done to address the issue. Govin says those who frequent Jalan Masjid India, especially traders, wholesalers and the likes, know the best time to get in and out of the location. While improved parking facilities would further enhance business, but as it is, people are not deterred. They do have alternative modes of transport. Govin and Nixon all believe that Jalan Masjid India will stay a crowd puller, what with its niche offerings and the established closely knit community. The CIMB headquarters, which will be coming up in 2010, will further enhance the value of the properties in the area by about 20% to 30%. For sure, the bus on Jalan Masjid India is very much alive and kicking.